Yep. All right, uh, let's go up to uh, 206 and talk to our good friend. He is the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is a regular guest here every every Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Pacific time. He is the great MTC, is the great Mark Taylor Canfield, and he joins us live from Seattle, WA. MTC, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Jeff. The city is rocking. <laughs> you are. Seattle is rocking. Folk Life Festival is back. It's cloudy, but what's new for Seattle, right? It's always sunny in in uh, Philadelphia, but not necessarily in Seattle. <laughs> and by the way, I have this coffee mug here that I'm drinking out of, and it's a coffee mug from Boston. But it's one of those things where, like, my mom went to Boston, and all I got was this stupid mug, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to get there again. And not just in the airport to look out the window, but actually, you know, to spend some time in that city because I know it's a very beautiful city and has an amazing heritage. So there you go. No doubt about that. We know how to do heritage. We know how to do the revolution and start it all here in Lexington and Concord. Uh, Concord, as they say locally. Um, and um, it is uh, it is a great uh, a great uh, Commonwealth, good place to live, and particularly right now where it's uh, close to 70 degrees outside. So that is a good thing. Uh, we get so much to talk about, Mark, because we've been doing it in uh, a number of different segments today. I know you had an opportunity to tune in uh, to the likes of Harvey K and, and Ripley and so forth and Miss Ross of NNU. Uh, and that is this uh, horrific incident in Buffalo and the big wins by progressives. And maybe we should start there because a lot of money has been poured in against progressives from the likes of uh, crypto uh, with all this insanity now. Uh, APAC, uh, the big fossil fuel companies uh, against uh, Democratic progressive uh, candidates, but yet Fetterman, Summer Lee, uh, a couple of other uh, Democratic progressives in the Pittsburgh area have won. Uh, we had wins in Oregon, not too far from you, and uh, Miss Andrea Salinas uh, for Congress, and of course the big one, McLeod, uh, McLeod um, uh, Skinner over um, Mr. Schrader, who of course gave the middle finger to Biden, but still got the endorsement from the president unbelievable uh you know i I think that's good news and a lot of people like miss sawant and and of course uh the head of the progressive caucus uh uh, there in seattle um miss jayapal should be very happy with the results on tuesday night i mean there wasn't a complete win with some bad news out of north carolina but for the most part a good good uh, night for progressives definitely and um a much uh happier occasion than the recent defeat of our friend Nina Turner yes. um, in in Ohio. But, yes, I am really actually kind of shocked. Not quite, not as shocked as I was maybe when, uh, when um, Bernie Sanders actually won, you know, 80% of the state during the caucuses here. But in Pennsylvania, Representative Summer Lee is poised to defeat uh, Steve Irwin. So that's uh, looking good. She's uh, the latest I see is that she's uh, leading 47% to 41%. So there's an indication. My um, my thoughts go to Jamie McLeod Scouter, uh, Skinner uh, in Oregon because we got to interact with her during the Progressive Democrats of America video conference, and she was amazing. She really impressed me as a natural leader and someone who is not afraid to organize in rural communities, which is something she complained a lot about. She basically said, if, uh, if this is a maybe a direct quote or a paraphrase, but she says, um, uh, most corporate Democrats are terrible at messaging when they are in rural areas of the country, even if they even bother to go there. So she's been talking to everyone. She, she doesn't care whether you're Republican, independent, Democrat, green, whatever, a socialist. She wants everybody to, to hear the truth, regardless of your party affiliation. And I think that's really worked well for her. She's a great grassroots organizer. She understands that it takes ground and knocking on doors and telephone banks in order to get this done. And she's not afraid to go out and talk to people in the community. And then you have this, you know, kind of Joe Manchin type, uh, yellow dog Democrat or whatever you want to call him. Um, Schrader, Kurt Schrader, um, and a blue dog Democrat, let's put it that way. And he's trailing by 20 percentage points. 
that blows my mind, Jeff, because when I heard her speak, I kind of had the same impression that I had the first time that I heard Pramila Jayapal speak, who later became a friend and now a member of Congress. And that is, I thought, this woman is way too uh, outspoken to ever get elected to office because people aren't used to being t spoken to honestly and they're going to have a problem with this. But no, it's just like with Bernie Sanders. Uh, if you, if you tell people the truth, if you cut through the nonsense and the po political um, posturing, you really can get some things done. And she was able to do that in Oregon. So that's kind of turning a page. Uh, Schrader has been a long time problem uh, for progressives, and he's now, you know, and, and another one of those Democrats who gets, you know, support from the leadership. Uh, but, um, you know, McLeod didn't. She did get some support from some local Democrat um, organizations, uh, but the the uh, bigwigs basically uh, did not endorse her. So there, there you go. It's another example of an underdog who came from nowhere and said, you know, we got to clean this crap up. Excuse my English there, my French or whatever. Uh, well, it was French to be okay. married, right? But, but you know, it's a, it's a way of um, telling the Democrats um, all across the country that, you know, you better pay attention to this progressive movement because it's not going away. We also, you know, it's happening in Pennsylvania, which is one of the states that were, you know, right there for Trump on the edge and, and going for Trump during 2016. So this is a change. Oregon's always been sort of progressive, but they've had their blue dog Democrats. And Schrader is a perfect example of that. Um, we also have a few, we also have one here in um, Washington State named Adam Smith who's uh, uh, who loves the you know he loves the defense uh, spending money on the Defense Department but you know it's time for uh, the corporate Democrats to wake up and smell the coffee you know and figure figure this out uh, if you want to win the next election uh, the, the general elections then you better pay attention to what's happening in Pennsylvania and Oregon right now and take a lead from uh, from our friend in Oregon, because she did such a great job at explaining to Democrats what has what needs to be done differently. Jamie is a go-getter, just like Pramila Jayapal and Shama Swan and some of the other powerful women up here. And by the way, women did really great um, during this primary, so that's another uh, change in American politics. We, need, we definitely need more women in the houses of Congress. Yeah, we're, and, we're and getting particularly getting great progressive women who come from, you know, I mean, in the case of Summer Lee from a labor background, you know, and, and you know, we we spoke again with the National Nurses United, you know, I mean, more more people who can run who have been teachers and nurses as an example, you know, the better off the country will be, the better off the Democratic Party will be because they can understand working class issues, they can understand somebody who makes thirty five k a year because at one point when you're starting out in both of those professions, that's what you make. So you know, this is. This is why it's, it's so critically important, you know, to, to understand uh, the working class, as Fetterman has pointed out and people have talked about, not just how he looks with the sweatshirt and all, but, you know, it's it's uh, in a six nine imposing character. But to me, this is an important piece of the puzzle, um, you know, that uh, you can talk to people. And once again, the Democratic Party can become the party of the working class, which has disappeared over the last 40 or 50 years. Um, I want to get your thoughts uh, before to actually take a call or two um, and, and get to some other good stuff too in, in greater Seattle. And, and, and that is, you know, the horror again of violence against African Americans in the Buffalo supermarket uh, that happened last Saturday. Um, you know, we have seen uh, violence in the streets, uh, violence by police uh, against uh, and people of color. You know, I was talking earlier about the fact with Representative Barbara Lee, an African American congresswoman from Oakland, um, about the fact that you know, and, and our good friend Kenneth Meeks wrote the book "Driving While Black." Uh, you know, it's driving while black. It's walking while black, which of course happened to Trayvon Martin and many others. Uh, and now it's shopping while black. I mean, just imagine, you know, Mark, you and I are, are not black, but if you would walk into a grocery store to get fruits and vegetables and bread and milk, uh, and you could look over your shoulder because there's some lunatic out there with a, with a rifle, with an assault weapon in this case, uh, you know, trying to gun you down because of the color of your skin. Uh, you know, yeah, it's just mind it's outrageous. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that things like that still happen in this country. Um, I can only say that um, it's 
definitely going to cause uh, another backlash and more consciousness raising, and it shouldn't take people being killed this way for that to happen. So wake up, America. Wake up, uh, corporate media, and start dealing with these issues. Racism has not gone away. By the way, the Seattle Police Department, uh, or actually the Washington uh, State Police Department, according to the Seattle Times latest investigative news report, um, have paid out uh, over $100 million in the last couple of years for wrongful death and other lawsuits against police departments across my state. Um, this year, already, there's been $34 million paid out. And so that's not a good sign. You know, we also have violence in our own police department. So when you have a violent culture and you have uh, a media and an entertainment industry that pushes that, that idea, and then you have all these violent uh, computer games, which are really, some of them are seriously violent. I seriously question, you know, people's mental health who spend all day on them. But um, they, you know, I mean, this is one of the results. And also you have a right wing, and we really need to be careful um, to counter this alt-right kind of return to racism in the United States and through the Republican Party largely, because that's a throwback to uh, the bad old days that, that nobody wants to go back to. And so all I can hope, Jeff, is that um, people uh, will take a stance against this kind of violence, that people will start to uh, talk to their neighbors and talk to their friends and get in, call this show and call other shows and start talking about this issue and make sure that uh, we change this country uh, because Dr. Martin Luther King would be in so, so disappointed right now, I think. And, and I, I often think of him when there, there's major violence against black people in this country. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Oh, for certainly, certainly. Um, look, for, I, I, I just, you know, at this point, you know, if we can't, uh, you know, communicate a message, uh, and again, this is the problem of media, as we have talked about endless times, uh, Mark, when you have people on Fox talking about, you know, um, the... The, the theories that uh, you know there there are people in univer- people in, in elementary school to high school uh, you know telling people that uh, oh well you know um, you know if you're if you are a white person you're evil and bad and you know you have to be responsible all of this is complete BS it doesn't happen it's a theory um, you know critical race uh, theory in in a couple of law school classes uh, other than that it's been made up by the Republican party and but this bs out there um you know this is what happens you know in fact i believe on the on the edge of the assault weapon you know where you hold the weapon it was this idea is this is your reparations um of course african americans have been trying to get reparations for slavery for 400 years and you know it's it's this kind of insanity and this goes on at fox news it goes on a right wing talk radio and it's just you know hate with a capital h that's out there quick thoughts and then we'll take a call well i mean that's let's let's be clear this is uh, political propaganda perpetrated by people in power, m- many of whom are quite wealthy or have extreme political or religious views, and they are manipulating the rest of uh, um, the people who follow those that kind of politics. And they know that uh, it's a false um, setup, the whole thing. They know that they're just manipulating people in order to get votes. And it's it's got to stop. I mean, that kind of corruption is so rampant in the Republican Party and across the certain parts of this country. And I'm, I'm for one, I'm sick of it. It's really, it's time for journalists and musicians and artists to stand up and start speaking out ag- about against it every day. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a battle for, uh, for what we want this country to be about. I, I don't want my friends who live in other countries around the world to keep seeing this country as a, a violent, racist country. That's not the image that I want to portray. This was supposed to be the birth of freedom. Uh, something happened along the way, and we need to correct it now. Amen to that, my friend. All right, let's go uh, to Arizona and talk to our good friend uh, Joe in Arizona. You're next with Mark Taylor Canfield. Go right ahead. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Mark. Um, Mark, I've got a big ask for you. Um, will you please use your connectivity with... Uh, Representative Jayapal, and like you know, we need evolution in that movement, and we really need a litmus test for all of our progressive values. 
you know, Jeff and I, we've been talking about this, uh, this platform and the Bernie platform in specific. And, you know, like, we just need people, like, in earnest ways that are going to be challenged. Like, we sign on to that thing. And this is what we need to do. Chantel Brown showed that, you know, she joined the day before Nina Turner uh, announced she was running for that seat. Okay, that shouldn't even be available. And that, and by the way, talk about poisoning the well. That's why we can't get Jack Squat done. Uh, and that's a real problem. Then also, Chantel Brown was coalescing with the Blue Dog Democrats. So, you know, it's this lack of vision that this party suffers from, right? But it is the clarity that the progressives are offering. But the, the power, the money, you know, and, and this is what I love about this show is the, the point you made before, Jeff. Uh, it, it's so poignant, and it, it was Joe Biden cucking to Kurt Schrader in Oregon. What a what a pussy move! I can't even believe that. Like he was the sole signatory of killing Build Back Better, you know. And these Trump think they can, you know, show up with that look, you know. And and it, by the way, this is what the black community. If you'd have heard uh, the like, I got Terry in my eyes, man. Uh, listen to her voice. Uh, yesterday, man, because, you know, that's a guy who's been around a lot of years. And, yeah. you know, and, and the pain, and, like, man, dude, like, let's say this. Okay. We know. Herb is a great role model. Let, 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 me, let, me say, let me say this. This is what's going to happen. We're, we're moveon.org on Buffalo. Just just get on the fast track and get out of town because, and, and leave all the tears, leave, you know, leave it all behind because George Floyd has, has been dead for a year. Hell, even Black Lives Matter, they just, they threw in the towel. They've been around since Trayvon Martin in 2014. And they took the money. They bought a house in L.A. that has six-car garage and three dance floors. And, man, they're just like, peace out. You guys, go be corporate Democrats and, and you know, go hang around. Corporate skanky Democrats. And But that ain't working for people. And uh, But if Jayapal, if you got connections, man, she needs to really – we've been, we've been chumped out by these uh, corporate Dems and – I mean, the time is to cut meat now, and uh, you know, without it, well, everybody she, is is just getting left. Yeah, she knows what I think for sure. Thank she you, follow, Joe. She follows me on Twitter and other social media, so she knows exactly what I'm thinking. And whenever I see her, I tell her what I'm thinking. And I am luckily not a member of Congress. Otherwise, I feel like sometimes my hands might be tied by the party or something. You know. Um, so as an artist and, and editorialist and, and journalist, I can actually speak out. And I have, think sometimes I have more freedom to say the things that uh, some of the political people I know might want to say, but are afraid that they're going to you know, lose their donors or something. So that's one thing about independent media. And, you know, we just celebrated World Press Freedom Day on May 3rd. And I keep telling people, and I was telling Democracy Watch News staff the other day that uh, one of the greatest hopes um, for media in the future is nonprofit independent media and programs like this because and once people uh, become media literate and I think that's got to become a major uh, ob- obligation and mission on my part and, and Democracy Watch News and other nonprofits is you know educate people about the media so they understand where what their sources are and where the biases are coming from and what they can expect. I mean, yeah, there's many different points of view, so I don't want to shut uh, people uh, up. I just want. Uh, people to realize that some of it is pure propaganda and you need to realize where that propaganda is coming from. But, um, anyway, that's my, that's my two cents about, um, press freedom because I really feel like nonprofits might be, um, uh, some, some hope for the future in terms of media, because that way they're not beholden to donors, advertisers and corporate interests. No doubt. Um, you know, this is a, a great weekend um, in Seattle. A uh, new f- uh, folk festival uh, announcement uh, is good, and your Mariners are playing my Red Sox in about an hour and a half, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it's uh, it's beginning to feel a little bit like summer, although I know the weather's been up and down. Oh, but this has been the worst spring ever, Jeff. I'm looking out my window and it's just cloudy, and it's been cloudy every day for the last two months. So we get, we got we get some sun break. I was able to get out on a kayak for a couple hours at a time here and there. Uh, but the other day, I tried to go out and it was 20 mile an hour winds. Uh, so I didn't leave shore. You know, I stayed very close to shore during a, a at a wind break. 
Um, and, you know, don't, don't ever do that, kids. Don't ever take a kayak out in 20-mile-an-hour winds. It's, I was trying to test out this kayak, and le- luckily we had a windbreak where I was at, so I was safe. But, yeah, I mean, uh, folk life is back. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was a lot of questions. I, you know, and I didn't actually uh, apply to perform this year because I and a lot of other people didn't, didn't know whether we were going to have a folk festival. So, um, yes, it's been reborn. For, it's a three-day festival, the 27th through the 30th, Memorial Day weekend here in Seattle. Or, and um, it's going to be great because people uh, are, are traditionally love this festival because it's free. It's like the only major free festival left in Seattle now that Bumbershoot costs so much money to get into. And I actually wrote an editorial for wow, the Capitol Hill Times. A couple, yeah, I wrote an editorial for the Capitol Hill Times a couple years ago and called out the Folk Life executive director, actually, for kind of threatening to either cancel the events or to start charging people at the door. And because normally they just rely on donations. But, you know, I, my statement there was it's a $3 million budget and half of, their, half of the, the artists don't even get paid. They just get like travel expenses or whatever. Wow. So, and believe me, Jeff, if somebody threw $3 million at me, I could throw, and I didn't have to pay most of the artists, I could throw a great event. But in any case, it's back. He came you know out he would. And said, no, and it no, would be it would be awesome with a capital A, my friend. They know you would. Yeah, and you know, so it's look, uh, it's just great. The, people are going to be dancing at the hippie drum circles and listening to music from all over the world and film festivals with films from all over the world. And everybody's really, really happy to see that it's back. You have to show proof of that in order to get into the event. Uh, but other than that, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, Don't get vaccinated, people. I mean, come on now. Boston Red Sox. No, no, not going to beat the Red Sox. Not this weekend. Maybe next weekend when you <laughs> when you play somebody <laughs> else. Uh, hey, all the best, MTC. All the best. Maybe you can win one game. We'll win three out of four. Uh, all the best, MTC. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. I uh, want to thank Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Uh, help today uh, early with our good friend, Representative Barbara Lee. I want to thank uh, all you all for great, great calls today, folks, uh, from our fantastic listeners coast to coast. Uh, we will be uh, enjoying the weekend. We hope you do, too. I ask you to keep fighting peacefully. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I gotta go!